Education is the key to empowering women and unlocking their full potential. Education is the spark that lights the flame of change. It provides women with a multitude of benefits that ripple throughout their lives and society as a whole. The impact of women's education echoes through generations. A mother's knowledge becomes a gift to her children, creating a legacy of enlightenment. Education breaks the chains that bind. It empowers women to challenge the status quo, defy expectations and chart their own destinies. Educated women find their voices. They become agents of change, challenging norms and steering societies towards equality and justice. Educated women are economic engines. They bring innovation, creativity and resilience to the workforce, driving economic growth and prosperity. Education for women is a beacon of hope, a testament to the enduring power of knowledge. As we stand witness to their journey, let it be a reminder. In educating a woman, we illuminate the path to a brighter, more equitable world for us all. Always leading the way. I am Nyla Hanim Scholar. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests, faculty members, and fellow students, good afternoon, and welcome to the special occasion that fills our hearts with pride and inspiration. I am Ibrahim Allah Hadiv, a student of Dunya School, and it is truly an honor to stand before you as we come together to celebrate the remarkable journey of education and excellence. Hanımlar ve canavlar, değerli konaklar, her vaxtınız hayır olsun. Büyük gürür hissiyle sizleri bu mühteşem tedbirimizde sağlayıram. Ben Dünya Mektedinin şagirdi Fərəh Rəsulzada təhsil ve mükemmelliğin vəhdətini geyit etmək için bir araya geldiğimiz bu tedbirde sizlerin karşınızda dayanmaktan şeref hissediyorum. Today we gather to commemorate the legacy of a visionary educator. Naila Hanım Isayla, the founder of Dunya School. Through her dedication and passion for education, she left an indelible mark on our school, shaping its values and inspiring generations of students. But today is not just about honoring the past, it's about embracing the future and recognizing the potential within each and every student. We are here to witness the impact of the Naila Hanım Foundation Scholarship, an initiative that transcends borders offering opportun an opportunity for a gifted female student to soar to new heights, regardless of nationality or citizenship. Bugünkü tədbirimizdə bizlər, Dünya Məktəbinin yaradıcısı, təcrübəli pedagog, nudulmaz insan Nayla Hanım İsaybanın layıklı irsini yad etmək üçün bir araya toplaşmışıq. Nayla Hanım'ın təhsili inkişafındakı əvəzsiz rolu Azərbaycan təhsili tarixində silinməz izlər qoyulur və onun əsasını qoyduğu ənənələr bugün də layıqınca davam edirlər. Ancaq bugünün məqsədi təkcə keçmişə yad etməkdən ibarət deyil. Həmçinin gələcəyə doğru inanmla atdınlamaq bacarıqı olan yeni nəslin yetişdirilməsi üçün yeni üfüqlər açmaq və imkanlar yaradmaqdır. İrqindən və milliyyətindən asılı olmayaraq, istedadlı qız tələbələr Nalih Hanım Fondu təqayüdü sayəsində öz təhsillərini davam etdirmək imkanı əldə edilməcəyir. Thank you all for joining us on this powerful journey through the heart of the Nalih Hanım Foundation Scholarship. Now, we would like to invite a person who holds a pivotal role in our school community, but also carries the legacy of the visionary we are here to honor today. Please join me in welcoming Aydun Gardner, the member of the Board of Trustees of Hazar University, Director of Dunya School, and the Chair of the Board of the Naila Hanım Foundation, and the daughter of the esteemed Naila Hanım Misaim. Naila Hanım təqaydını təqdim etmək üçün təşkil olan bu mühtəşəm tədbirdə bizimlə bərabər olduğunuz üçün hamınıza təşəkkür edirik. Gəlin Dünya Məktəbinin direktoru, Nalə Xanım Fondunun idarə həyətinin sədri və hürmətli Nalə Xanım İsaevan qızı, Aygün Xanım İsaeva qardiyyəri səhnəyə dəvət edək. Good afternoon, dear guests. I am delighted to welcome you here on behalf of Nalə Xanım Foundation today. Salam, əziz qonaqlar. Nalə Xanım Fondu adından sizi burada salamlamaqdan çox məmnunam. After the law 
launched our model just under three years ago, we felt that it was essential that we honor and commemorate her life and ensure her legacy. So we've created a number of initiatives, and this foundation is the chief one amongst them. Biz anamızı təhminin üç yıldan əvvəl itirəndən sonra onun həyatını anmağın, yad etməyin, onun ilsini təmin etməyin çox önəmli olduğunu düşündük və bu məqsədlə bir sıra tədbirlər həyata keçirdik. Bu fond da onların arasında ən önəmlilərdən biridir. Nayla xanım alma da fotosofi bu didn't know her, was in some ways um, an ordinary Azerbaijani woman, but she also wasn't, as she went on to achieve um, really extraordinary things. She achieved those things because she was curious, she was extremely hardworking, she had an immaculate taste, and she consistently improved herself. But most importantly, she was an exceptionally good person. And it is this goodness that everyone remembers when they talk about her. She encouraged and helped so many around her. Bizim anamız Nale Hanım, onu tanımayanlara biraz onun hakkında danışın. O belki de bazı hususiyetlerine göre sadece bir Azerbaycan kadınıydı. Ama aynı zamanda değildi. Çünkü hayatı erzinde gayri adi şeylere nail olabildi. O çok geniş dünya görüşlü, çok çalışkan, çok zövklü ve daim özünü tekmilleştiren bir insan idi. Ama en asası o inanılmaz derecede mehriban ve xeyrhat insan idi. Onun hakkında danışanda herkes məhz onun xeyrhatlığından danışır. O etrafındaki her, herkese destek, heves ve ıı, ilham verildi. She found her true calling when after many years of being a teacher, a mother, a wife, she set up uh, this school, Dünya School. And she loved this school so much. So this is a really perfect venue to conduct this ceremony today. O, Anayla Hanım uzun iller fədakar müəllim, mükəmməl ana, sabit həyat yoldaşı olduqdan sonra məhz dünya məktəbini quranda əsil məsləyini və ilhamını tapdı. Və o, bu məktəbi çox sevirdi. Ona görə də bugün bura bu mərəsim keçirmək üçün həqiqətən də çox uyğun bir məkandır. Nayla Hanım gəzib ki, a dedicated, smart team, majority of whom are women. Most of them, if not all, are sitting here today, and you know who you are, all over there, <laughs> and they are continuing her good work. Nayla Hanım burada əksəriyyəti qadınlardan ibarət fədəkar adlı bir komandu toplayıb. Hamısı olmasa da bir çoxu bugün buradadır və öz bilirlər mənkindən danışıram və onun gözəl işini çox böyük uğurla davam edirlər. Educating the next generation was our mother's passion. So it was entirely fitting to set up a scholarship in her name that promoted and encouraged talented females to enter uh, graduate education and achieve their dreams of leadership just like she did. Gələcək nəsil təhsil və tərbiyyəsi anamızın həyatının mənası, məqsədi və əmalı idi. Ona görə də istedadlı gənc qadınları master və ya doktor proqramlarına daxil olmağa və liderlik arzularına çatmağa həvəsləndirən və onun adını daşıyan bu təqayüb təhsil etmək bizim fikrimizcə çox məqsədə uyğun bir ideya idi. Now this is our third year that we award this prestigious scholarship. Artıq üçüncü ildir ki, bu nüfuzlu təqayüdü biz təqdim edirik. This scholarship includes pretty much everything. Tuition fees for the duration of study at Hazar University, accommodation expenses, monthly stipend, and return flight tickets for our overseas students. Təqarib demək olar ki, hər şey əhətə edir. Xəzər Üniversitetində təhsil müddətdə ərzində təhsil haqqı, yaşayış xərcləri, aylıq təqarib və xarici tələbələrimiz üçün Bakıya gəlmək üçün bir cüd ədəb edir. We've had diverse and talented candidates to choose from, and our past winners, some of whom you will meet today, have come from a wide variety of backgrounds, from Afghanistan, Indonesia, Italy, and this year from Iran. Xeyli istedadlı qanicədlərimiz var idi və keçmiş qayıblərimiz Afganistandan, İndoneziyadan, İtaliyadan və bu il isə İrandan gəlir. Bu, çox müxtəlif mənşəli gənc qadınlardır. Bəziləri ilə siz bugün tanış olacaqsınız. Now, it is my dream that next year we may be able to recognize talents of a candidate from Azerbaijan too. Because we don't have to give just one scholarship. If there's more suitable candidates, we will give you more. And I ask you all to spread the news of this scholarship so that we can make another able woman's dreams come true. 
Arzudur ki, gəlir biz Azərbaycandan olan bir gənc qadını da istedadlarını tanıya bilək. Hamınızdan bu təqarif xəbərini yaymanızı xayiş edirəm ki, başqa bir istedadlı gənc qadının xəyalları gerçəkləşdirə bilək. Xəyallarını gerçəkləşdirə bilək. For now, enjoy your afternoon and I'll be back with you later on to announce this year's Nayla Hanım School. İndi isə biz proqramımızı davam edirik və günün sonunda biz sizə bu ilin Nayla Hanım təqərbçisini təqdim edəcəyik. Çox sağ olun. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Aydın Gardiner, for your inspiring words and for sharing with us the profound impact of the Nayla Hanım Foundation School. Ruhlandırıcı sözləri və Nayla Hanım təqərbinin əhəmiyyətini bizlərlə bölüşdüyü üçün Aydın Hanıma təşəkkür edirik. Ladies and gentlemen, to truly understand the depth of the legacy we are celebrating today, we invite you to embark on a visual journey to the life of the remarkable woman behind the vision, Nayla Hanım Misayla. Hanımlar ve canavlar, qeyd etdiyimiz bu günün mənasını daha dərindən dərk etmək üçün sizi görkəmli pedagog Nayla Hanım Misayla'nın həyatına vizual səyahət etməyə dəvət edirik. Nailə xanım İsayeva 1947-ci il may ayının 29-unda Azərbaycan Respublikasının Quba şəhərində anadan olmuşdur. 1954-cü ildə Nailə xanım Bakıda məktəb təhsilinə başlamış. Paralel olaraq musiqi məktəbində fartapiyano sinfində oxumuşdur. Orta məktəbin son sinfini Qubada Rus məktəbində oxumuş, 1965-ci ildə məzun olmuşdur. 1963-66-cı illərdə Quba Musiqi Məktəbində müəyyən fasilələrlə fartapiyano sinfi üzrə müəllim vəzifəsində çalışmışdır. 1970-ci ildə Hamlet İsaxanlı ilə ailə həyatı qurmuşdur. 1971-1985-ci illərdə dörd qız övladı dünyaya gətirmişdir. O, həm də qayğı keş, diqqətli həyat yoldaşı, gözə, sevgi dolu ana idi. 1971-75-ci illərdə Mirzə Fətəli Axundov adına Azərbaycan Pedagoji Dillər İnstitutunda, indiki Bakı Slavyan Universitetində Rus dili və ədəbiyyatı iqtisası üzrə ali təhsil almışdır. 1990-91-ci illərdə Prof. Hamlet Saxanlının Bakı şəhərində təsis etdiyi ilk özəl ali məktəbin Xəzər Universitetinin qurulmasında böyük rol oynamış, Bu ali məktəb 2012-ci ildə yenidən rəsmi qeydiyyatdan keçərkən, Hamlet Saxanlı ilə yanaşı Xəzər Universitetinin həm təsisçisi olmuşdur. 1997-ci ildə Xəzər Universiteti xanımlar klubunu yaratmış, onun sədri olmuşdur. Mən 1998-ci ildə Hamlet Saxanlı ilə birlikdə Xəzər Universiteti nəzdində Dünya Məktəbi adlı eksperimental 11 illik məktəb açmışdır. Dünya Məktəbinin həm təsisçisi və qurucu direktor olmuşdur. Məktəbi yaradarkən hər bir uşağın bütünlüklə bacarığını, potensialını açmaq və aşkara çıxartmaq arzulayırdım. Elə bir məktəb yaratmaq istəyirdim ki, Orada uşaq dünyanı öyrənsin, özünün dünya görüşünü genişləndirsin. 2000-ci ildə mahnı yaradıcılığına başlamış. Sonraki illər ərzində Hamlet Səxanlının sözlərinə 8 mahnı bəstələmişdir. Eyni zamanda Dünya Məktəbinin Dünyam adlı mahnı himnini yazmışdır. Onun bəstələrini tanınmış müğənilər ifa etmişlər. Azərbaycan Respublikasının prezidenti 2013-cü ildə Dünya Məktəbini ən yaxşı məktəblər sırasına daxil etmiş və mükafatlandırmışdır. 2013-cü ildə Xəzər Universiteti Mədəniyyət Mərkəzini yaratmışdır. Bu mərkəz indi Nailə xanım Mədəniyyət Mərkəzi adını daşıyır. 2015-ci ildə Nailə xanım Dünya Məktəbinin Dünya Dərgisini təsis etmiş, onun baş redaktor olmuşdur. 
2015-ci ildə Dünya Ana Məktəbini, Uşaq Baxçası və Məktəbə Hazırlığı təsis etmiş və qurmuşdur. 2016-cı ildə Sumqayıtda Dünya Məktəbini yaratmışdır. 2017-18-ci illərdə Xəzər Universiteti Konfrans və İstirahət Mərkəzinin və 2019-2020-ci illərdə Gəncə Dünya Məktəbinin qurulmasında iştirak etmişdir. 2010-2021-ci illərdə Xəzər Universiteti Direktorlar və Qəyyumlar Şurasında Humanitar və Təşkilatı İşlər üzrə müşavir vəzifəsində işləmişdir. 2011-2021-ci illərdə Dünya Məktəbi Direktorlar Şurasının sədri vəzifəsində işləmişdir. Nailə xanım İsayeva 3 aprel 2021-ci ildə vəfat etmişdir. Nailə xanım İsayevanın müasirlərinə məlum olan parlaq surətini, əvəzsiz xidmətlərini gələcək nəsillərə ötürmək, Nailə xanımın əziz xatirəsini əbədiləşdirmək üçün Xəzər Universiteti Direktorlar və Qəyyumla Şurası bu tədbirləri həyata keçirmişdir. Qız və qadınların yüksək ali təhsil, magistratura və doktorantura təhsili almasına kömək etmək üçün Nailə xanım fondu və onun verəcəyi Nailə xanım təqayüdü təsis edilmişdir. Nailə xanım haqqında dost, həmkar və tanışıların yazdığı xatirələr kitabı hazırlanıb çapdan çıxmışdır. Nailə xanımın həyat və fəaliyyətinə əks etdirən şəkilli album kitablar hazırlanmışdır. Nailə xanımın yazdığı musiqilərin fortepiyano, vokal və kamera orkestrı üçün not kitabı hazırlanıb çapdan çıxmışdır. Onun müəllifi olduğu mahnıların tanınmış müğənnilər və qruplar tərəfindən ifası musiqi albumu şəklində hazırlanmışdır. Nailə xanımın həyat və fəaliyyətini əks etdirən video materiallar sistemə salınır və yeni tərtibatda filmlər hazırlanır. Bakı Dünya Məktəbində Nailə xanım muzeyi yaradılmışdır. Dünya Təhsil Kompleksinin Bakı, Sumqayıt, Gəncə filiallarında Nailə xanımın büstü qoyulmuşdur. Xəzər Universiteti Mədəniyyət Mərkəzi Nailə xanım Mədəniyyət Mərkəzi adlandırılmış, orada büstü qoyulmaqla Nailə xanım gülşəsi yaradılmışdır. Nailə xanımın əziz xatirəsinə tanınmış bəstəkarlardan Cavanşer Quliyev, Nailə xanım, Sərdar Fərəcov, Eligiya əsərlərini itaf etmişlər. 2021-ci il noyabrın 12-sində Xəzər Universitetinin mərmər salonunda Nailə xanım fondunun təsis etdiyi Nailə xanım təqayüdünün ilk təqdimat mərasimi keçirilmişdir. Təqayüd müəssisələrin təşkili və idarə olunması üzrə Əfqanıstanlı doktorant Bibi Rayhan Hamidiyə təqdim olunmuşdur. Parla qömrünün əbədi xatirəsi tək onu tanıyanların qəlbində deyil, Nailə xanım təqayüdü ilə təhsil alanların da yaddaşlarında əbədi qalacaq.
nurturing female leaders of tomorrow. We are privileged to have a panel of insightful individuals, all of whom are students here at Dunia School, ready to share their perspectives and experiences. In this Öz perspektivleri ve tecrübelerini bölüşmeye hazır olan aşık fikirli gençlerden ibaret bu paneli sizlere teklim etmekten gurur hissediyorum. Panel dünya bir mektebinin şahitleri tarafından hazırlanır. These young minds are not only students, but the voices of a generation aspiring to make a difference. So without further delay, let's get ready for a conversation that promises to inspire and ignite our collective commitment to empowering the leaders of tomorrow. Please join me in welcoming our moderator, Jabal Daslanov, and esteemed panelists, Nazrin Bavrova, Azer Mehmetzade, Nur Alraji, Amina Rehmanova, Nureddin Mehdi. Gençler, tekçi şairler değil, hem de fark yaratmaya, yenilikler etmeye can atan neslin numaraları denildiğinde. Belirlikle, vakti firmeden, sabahın liderlerinin gücünü ve müzakere mevzusunda fikirlerini görmek için sahnenin panelistlere tehvil veren. Gelin birlikte, moderatörümüz Cevat Aslanoğlu ve değerli panelistlerimizi karşılayan Nazrin Bahrova, Azer Mehmetzade, Nur Araji, Hello, dear audience. Today's theme of discussion is going to be about nurturing female leaders from dreams to degrees. In Azerbaijan, we want to have this kind of conversation more often, uh, and we think that our angle of education as students would be interesting to you guys. Before we start, I want to have a thought experiment. Think of a successful CEO. Think of how they present themselves, of what they wear, how they speak. And now I would like all of you to raise your hands if you think, if you thought of a man. Raise your hand if you thought of a man. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, most of you didn't, but the current perception in a lot of places around the world is that men are the image of CEOs, of leaders that make up our lives. The reality is, one third of all high growth businesses are led by women. But we don't come to acknowledge this fact. Today, we're going to be talking about how education can change this. How we can nurture female leaders of tomorrow. I will have a paper here with my questions to ask these beautiful panelists. And, okay, so let's start with the first question. To start up this discussion, we will first have to define what it means to nurture women to be leaders. So, is leadership a trait one can nurture or train? If I may, just have to... Oops. Uh, I just... Yeah, if I may just uh, answer that question. Naturally, of course, no one is born a leader. The ability to lead is a trained skill. However, that leadership can be taught to people in their upbringings through proper education. However, with that leadership comes a few trait characteristics, those that leaders often have, such as compassion, outgoingness, intelligence, and honesty. In a research study done by the Pew Research Center, it was found that these qualities were often associated with women. They were feminine qualities. However, we don't see women expressing these qualities. Why is that? It's because we don't allow women in the first place to, to participate in roles of leadership. We need to give women the opportunity to be leaders in the first place, since it is a learned skill that can be learned through practice. And to combat this, we have to instill in our youth, in our education, to give women the idea, the belief, that they can be trained leaders through practice and through determination. But don't you think that's too optimistic of a view? Like, there are still certain ideas ingrained within us that connect men to leaders. Uh, for example, a study was done that uh, has proved that we psychologically connect people with, who are taller with a higher social rank. This makes it harder for women, especially those with a smaller frame, to be able to uh, be given the credit they deserve. Um, so even if you train them to have the characteristics you mentioned, they are still not going to be given the same uh, status as a man has those traits. Okay. 
So to add on to that point, there has been a study done recently on uh, analysis of how a person's pitch can affect their perception of that individual. So uh, subjects who are presented individuals with lower pitched voices and higher pitched voices found that individuals were more often to think of people with higher pitched voices as less trustworthy and less likely to be leaders compared to individuals who have a lower pitched voice. And this again demonstrates, demonstrates another example of how women still have a physical barrier when it comes to leadership positions. However, this shouldn't mean that women cannot be in positions of leadership. In fact, as the moderator has stated, there is many female leaders out there who are doing well. There are. There really are. But um, there are a lot of women who are doing well out there, but they're portrayed in a certain way. And we all know this to be true. In the media, all around us, we see women portrayed in a certain way and men being portrayed in a certain way. How do these portrayals of women negatively impact their opportunity? Because we know it's not good. We know um, women leaders aren't really seen on the same stage as men leaders. They're in a different league. So how does this affect their opportunities? Yeah, I think I could actually give a bit of my perspective on that question. So, before I start, we could all state that nowadays media has a very influential impact on our daily lives, especially young adults and teenagers nowadays, you know, they're consumed by multiple social media platforms. And I feel like a topic of discussion that's very overlooked is how they display um, you know, nurturing female leaders for tomorrow, the topic of discussion. Now, Media in general, um, the story behind this would be the confirmation bias within the media system. So what I mean by that is when we scroll on media, we could see that leadership skills and leadership roles are predominantly impacted through a male perspective and men stepping into the role and being leaders. And the women are really just left in submissive roles and not really having a voice to step in and take those leadership skills and you know show in more assertive perspective. And really the core reason for this would be the male portrayal in media. So media in general has been represented and originated through men. And this sort of hinders the ability for women to give their own insight. And whenever they do even get an insight, it's through their physical attributes. Now, a common example I could give from this, it was the 2016 presidential elections in the United States. Uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton um, while she was giving her speeches and her policy proposals, the media had taken the perspective of her leadership skills and only, not only neglected her policy proposals, but commented on her personal life and commented on her physical appearance. Now this, ladies and gentlemen, would give the impression that women are solely commented and viewed through their physical attributes rather than their real voices and the leadership skills they want to pursue. Now, I would like to connect, connect what Amina has said to yeah. my personal experiences. Um, I mean, the statement that the men have been in control of the media and that it has led to a specific visualization of women in our society and community is correct. But I think we have to mention that now there is a positive shift and that women are being portrayed better and that uh, their contribution in politics or in, in any other leadership role is actually being valued. So from my personal experience, when I used to live in Germany, um, for the former, former Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel, she was actually highly praised by the German media, despite of course some of her controversial and highly unappreciated decisions. So let's actually put uh, Merkel aside and uh, let's forget the, um, the showcase of her resilience on leadership. In general, the German politics, the, the German parties like the, the Greens, the Social Democratic Party, the Christian Democratic Union, all of these parties have one thing in common. There is a significant presence of women. And this actually shows already the, how the contribution of women in politics is being valued and how there is a positive shift towards the female contribution in leadership roles. So, um, apart from me, as far as I know, Nuratin has also lived in a foreign country. Perhaps he could share his experiences as well. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Azeb. So coming from a more Eastern background, coming from Saudi Arabia, a society that's more conservative, traditional, I've seen women go from gaining the right to be able to drive cars on their own, to be able to leave their homes without male guardians, and all of this was possible through social activism, especially through social media. It was because of these women Oh, sorry. It was because of these women who were able to protest for their rights through social media that they gained it in the first place. And that's exactly how we combat these harmful and destructive stereotypes and norms. We can prove through social media that women are capable and are fit for roles of leadership. Alright, I'll, I'll comment on that. You said uh, social activism, social media. Society creates or gets views, let's say, from social media, right? They have some sort of views and expectations of women. How do these expectations, the things that we expect from our uh, mothers, sisters, you know, um, female colleagues, how do these things shape their opportunities, our expectations on them? How does it? Uh, I, these expectations 100% shift our perception on what a woman can be. So I'd like all of you to show off hands. How many of you have working mothers? Working mothers, a lot. A lot of people, and that is prevalent in Baku because in Baku, uh, the idea of, for example, our director or a lot of the head of different departments in this school are women. And that is because in Baku, women are very much encouraged to become leaders. True. But in other areas, like in rural areas of Azerbaijan, this is not the case. Uh, like in the southern parts, many women are forced or pressured into an early marriage. Um, like around, actually more than a thousand women uh, in the span of like two years are forced into an early marriage. I can give you the example of Gunay Gurieva. Um, she has um, gotten pressured into getting, mer uh, into getting married by her mother. She thought it would be better for her future but it showed to not be. Uh, she ended up uh, in a, an extremely horrible financial situation after that time. So what I'm trying to say is that the expectations, the difference in expectations between Baku versus rural areas shapes how women can act and, how, and what women can become in their future. <laughs> yeah, if I may just add some evidence onto that. Another study conducted found that women were more likely to have children at a later age. Nowadays, women are more financially independent, they're more educated, they're more just capable on their own, and as a result of that, and as a result of, of course, societal pressures, stereotypes being less stressful, less pressing, we have women now who are able to have kids at a later, later age where they can prioritize their careers. Among us in the PAL stage, for example, a colleague of mine, Nazarin, can speak from our own personal experience. Thank you for, for the yield, Merefdin. Yes, I can speak from personal experience um, about how societal expectations has led me to experience discrimination. For example, a few months ago, I was in a model United Nations conference, uh, an academic simulation, and I was representing Myanmar on the topic of statelessness. And uh, we had, our committee had, a crisis. And despite the fact that me and another male delegate were suggesting the exact same idea, he still, in the, mid in the midst of it all, said on the top of his lungs, you are not listening, this is why you are here. And although this did not affect me, it still represents how poor media portrayal has led me to have this experience in the first place. All right, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, we see these kind of small things every day, right? Um, small uh, comments, yeah. small uh, gestures, facial expressions. They mean a lot in the end. And they show us how expectations of women really do influence them. But um, how do these same um, expectations play out in history? Because, of course, this isn't a new issue, right? We have been talking about this for 200 years, like how, how many years? Centuries. We've been talking about this for centuries. So how has the discussion changed over time? Well, what's new? I mean, Jawa, let's look, look at this globally. Uh, let's, look the, let, let's shift our focus to Azerbaijan. Okay. So, um, in the end of 19th and beginning of 20th centuries, uh, I would say one of the biggest figures of Azerbaijani history, Ajizin Anupin Tagiev, he wanted to establish a girls' school in Baku. So, how did the process go on? 
Initially, even he asked the permission from the Emperor uh, Alexander III. He asked it from him because Azerbaijan was part of the Russian Empire. So he initially faced a rejection to establish a girls' school in Baku. After some time passed, he, um, during the reign of Tsar Nicholas II, he uh, presented an astonishing gift to his wife, okay. uh, Alexandra Fyodorov, and he promised the Tsar to name the girls' school after him. So, in 1896, um, Hadjuz al um, was given a verbal consent, and four years later, he was given an official permission to establish a girls' school in Baku. So, let's just think of it. He got an official permission, and before he got a verbal consent, he's appreciated by the Russian um, family, uh, the ruling family, but there came a problem. Let's just brainstorm it here. What do you guys think would be the problem that Hajj Zayn al faced? Society. Exactly. Uh, so not like society, but the cultural and the religious opposition stated that um, the females attending the school, it, this um, statement, this opinion, uh, actually goes against the teachings of religion, which is Islam in our country. Yeah. So Hajj Zayn al he just um, I would say, play with their own rules. Play with the rules of the uh, opposition, uh, with, with the rules of opposition. So he sent representatives of school to the holy cities around the world. This include Mecca, Medina, Khorasan, Karbala, and even Istanbul, because some of the religious uh, scholars, uh, they were present in Istanbul. So what did he get in return? In return, he got scriptures, official religious scriptures, um, which stated that the uh, which stated that girls attending school does not contradict any of the teachings of Holy Quran, and that it allows you still to be on the path of Islam. So uh, eventually, the historic day came. Uh, in autumn in 1901, the first secular girls' school was opened in Azerbaijan. It was opened in Baku. So what I want to say is that. Um, despite some of the comments that were received, as small as they can be, sure. or some gestures, sure. still there has been sort of a revolution, and not only in our Azerbaijan, not only in Azerbaijan, but also worldwide in different countries, and not only women, women, but also men have contributed to this. So, if somebody is willing, perhaps you could give another example of a great figure who has contributed to female education and presence of females in leadership roles. Interesting. A great example I can provide for what he asked, a male leader who has um, provided a lot in the course of the history of education would be uh, the example of John Stuart Mill. Um, in his time, in the 19th century, he was a, a philosopher and a politician, and he had written a book at that time uh, which detailed why women should vote. And although right now, if you think about it, it's obvious why women should, vo should vote, this basic human right was not recognized at that time. And this can show you, this goes to illustrate the physical shift of our perceptions in how we view what women should have and what women should do. What I'm trying to say is that so long as we continue to perpetuate the correct ideas, we will eventually, throughout history, as time goes on, we will change society's minds into nurturing better uh, female leaders. It's, a, it's really a beautiful revolution coming not only from women but also from men. We have to work together. I mean, it's it's not a one-sided battle. We're not fighting against each other. It's you know we're all fighting against the same thing. But I really think that these small changes have caused the revolution, and he is right. But how has that impacted countries? How has that impacted the population? I mean, as a whole, how is that um, impacting countries all around the world? That's my question. So, before answering the question, I just want to uh, mention one important thing. So, education is a fundamental human right. I feel as though many people can agree on that. But one interesting thing about human rights is that they're interdependent. So, one can get an education, can also get a job, and contribute to their country through the workforce. And this has been true for women as well. So when uh, women receive an education, they can also contribute to their country by participating in the workforce, and therefore benefiting the country economically. This has been present in examples, for example, a case study of Ostung et al. It was a research uh, group 
that focused on school enrollment rates in the Asia-Pacific uh, region and how it impacted the overall GDP of the country. And the results and the correlation was positive. Uh, the more school enrollment was uh, on the half of women, the more the GDP of the country increased. And uh, furthermore, this allows them to participate politically as well, if anyone would like to comment on that. I mean, you stated all of the things that um, still we are not in a perfect situation uh, globally, I would right, say. Right, yeah. right. Uh, but among the most egalitarian and fair societies are those found in Nordic countries. Oh, which are? Uh, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland, Finland, and these are Norway. the yeah Norway also yeah, and these are the countries where the share of women in parliaments is proportional to the population share, mm -hmm. which, um, as uh, on a table level as it may sound, is forty six percent, and that's quite um, astonishing compared to the rest of the world. Sure. So this actually shows how women are. Uh, able to receive at least tertiary or uh, university education in their countries and how it helps women uh, to become more empowered, uh, to contribute to their society and overall contribute to their country economically and thus improve also their GDP. So it uh, gives us opportunities um, in every field. Now before we wrap up, Let's talk about how we can implement this in schools, because we are in a school, Dunya school, grade school. Uh, let's talk about how this school and other schools can implement what we talked about today. Let's talk about that. Who can? Yeah, yeah I can just give an insight before we wrap up this panel discussion. Well, today we've talked about the media's portrayal of women in leadership roles. We've talked about the history. We've talked about real life examples. But one thing we didn't talk about is how schools like Dunya Ibisko could implement these strategies to further foster female development and female leadership. Now, first of all, we'd like schools in general to let women's voices be heard. Now, we know that schools in general are likely to allow the voices of both men and women be heard, but we're encouraging for women to step into the leadership roles, pursue careers in journalism, pursue careers in politics, not let these societal expectations that men are the dominant forces uh, surrounding these career paths and really let women step in the world to shine and not let their voices get ahead of all of these false accusations. That was brilliant. Anyway, okay, this was very insightful, but unfortunately we are running out of time. We're not going to take up much more of your time. Um, but before we finish, let me say that we need to understand that this is a complex issue. And it's a vital one and it needs a lot of discussion. Let us remember that the journey toward achieving gender equality is ongoing. Mm -hmm. We're still doing this, right? And it requires collective effort and commitment from all of us. Each of us can make an individual difference in all of our lives to, obviously, promote gender equality. I'd like to thank all of the panelists first uh, in today's talk and the audience for their attention. I'd like to thank the ad amazing administration for making this happen and making this come true and you know, make our voices heard. All right, have a nice day, goodbye. Thank you to our moderator and panelists for embarking on this insightful exploration of empowering the female leaders of tomorrow. The depth of wisdom displayed by our students truly exemplifies the spirit of progress and education we hold dear at Dunya School. Böyle hassas bir mevzuda apartmanların değerli müzakereye göre şagirdlerimize teşekkür ederim. Bu çıkışta hakikaten de dünya mektebinin temel prensibi olan terakki ve tehsil vehdetinin şahidi oldu. Now, as we continue this celebration of achievement, it is our privilege to invite our distinguished guests to join us on stage. We will be honored to have you with us sharing your ideas on the topic of today's event. Let us invite our esteemed guest the Member of Parliament of Azerbaijan, Chairperson at the Council of State Support to NGOs under the President of Azerbaijan, Azai Kuliyev. Bizler bu naliyyətin bayramını davam etdirərkən, hörmətli qonaqlarımıza səhnəyə dəvət etmək üçün bizim üçün şərəfdir. 
و به دلیل این خانوار و جنابا حرمت گناهم است ازربایجان ملی مجلسی دپتاته پریزیت یانوندا که هدلاره دولت دسته شراسی سدری ازای گولیو، سامبایر و سهنه دارد دیدری Bəlkə ki, öncə sizin hər kəsinizi təbrik edirəm. Hürmətli Hamid Məhəd, hürmətli Dünya Məktəbinin qədəkər məhəbləri, bəyərli qurmaqlar. Mən sizi ilk növbədə salamlayıram və təşəkkür edirəm ki, belə bir gözəl günü və belə gözəl anları bizə yaşatdınız. Mən açıqı bu tədbirə dərbət alanda və çıxış üçün təktif alanda Özüm üçün bəzi tez istəyir müəyyənləşdirmişdim, hansı istiqamətdə qısa olaraq danışa bilərəm. Amma indi tamamilə həmin o tez istərdən imtina edədik və burada gördükləri bizim dünya məktəbinin doğrudan da təqdimatı o qədər təhsil oldu ki, düşünürəm ki, elə bu haqda danışmaq həm Nailə xanımın sözü əsl mədəsində Aylin xanımı qeyd etdi kimi bizim üçün Bizim gənclər üçün qoyub getdiyi bu təhsil mirasını necə bundan sonra inkişaf etdirmək haqqında bəzi fikirlərini deyir, həm də bizim bu gözəl tərəbələrimizin gördüyü işlər haqqında qısa olaraq təbii ki, bəzi məqamlara toxunur. Mən bu səhniyyə qulaq asa-asa və dinləyə-dinləyə öz gəncliyimi bir anlığa göz önünə gətirdim və bizim nəsil orta nəsildir və bizim nəsil belə bir xoşbəxtliyə Belə bir xoşbəxti bizim nəsilə qismət olmamışdır. Belə gözəl təhsil, belə gözəl performanslar. Dünyanın bu gün, deyək ki, çalışlarını doğru düz qiymətləndirərək bütün ülkədə Azərbaycanın inkişaf strategiyasını dəqiq tutaraq, təhsilin məhz o istiqamətə yönləndirərək belə bir institusiyallaşma, belə bir təhsil ocağı təhsil ki, o vaxt yoxdur. Amma bu gün özümə çox xoşbəxt istəyirəm. Həqiqətə, həm bir müdəf vəkil olaraq, həm bir valideyn olaraq, həm bir vətəndaş olaraq ki, bizim Azərbaycanda məhz Hamlet müəllimlə, Nailə xanımın rəhbərliyi ilə, burada ərləşər fədakər müəllimlərin yaxından dəstəyi ilə, işraki ilə, tövbəsi ilə belə bir gözəl təhsil ünusu da Azərbaycanda fərq edir göstərdi. Biz bu gənclərə baxanda, baxın, nə qədər gözəl, nə qədər özünə güvənli şəkildə bu debatı təşkil etdilər. Bu debatın iki ana xətti vardır. Azərbaycanın ümumiyyətlə insanlığı inkişafı və bu insanlığı inkişafında qadınları tuta biləcəyi və haqq etdiyi rolu qeyd etmək və bu rolun həyətli keçilməsi üçün təhsilə bütün imkanlarına faydalanmaqdır. Bilirsiniz, bu gənclərin bu qədər məsələyə hakim olması, ingilis dində çox gözəl danışması, indi bizim burada və nəmkərin burada, Şahin Məlumdə buradadır. Biz cavan vaxtı gənclər olanda çox çətinliklə bu dili öyrənirdik və hələ də öyrənirdik. Amma bugün gənclərimizin bu qədər hazırlıqda olması biz siz adamın nə tərəf söz edərdir. Doğrudan da bunu önlərdən dediyi kimi gələcəyimiz gənclərin əlindədir. Bu gənclərə görəndə bir daha əmin olursa ki, doğrudan da gələcəyimiz etibarı əlindədir. Ona görə də hürmətli hamil etməli. Mən sizə təşəkkür edirəm. Həqiqətən də bu təşəkkürə layiqsiniz. Və düşünürəm ki, bugün dünya məktəbinin tövbüktə fəaliyyəti onun konsepsiyası, yanaşması bütün Azərbaycanda ayrıq yerlərdə də bu təmin olmalıdır. Bu institutun, yəni bu məktəbin filalları yaradılmalıdır. Siz indi gəncədə, sünqayətdə bu təqrimatda gördük, bunu edirsiniz. Lütfən, davam edin bu istiqamət işlərimizi. Bu ilə Azərbaycan hər yerdə, xüsusilə bu gün həssas bizim bölgələrimiz var ki, qadınlar, qızlarımız təhsildən yayınırlar. Bu gün biz nəyə vuruşuruq? Nəyə mübarizə aparırıq, erkin nikah olur. Bugün nəyə mübarizə aparırıq, məhşə zora çıxır olur. Bugün nəyə müzakirə aparırıq, qadınların bugün cəmiyyətdə tutacağı olur. Əlbəttə bu istiqamətdə biz çox işlə görmüşük. İndi biz, məsələn, bizim tarifə, bizim gərçəlimiz xatırlatdılar Cənabın Qarı Yəqin qızlar seminari yazsın, qızlar məktəbdən hansı çətinliklə yaradırlar. Eyni zamanda bu fikirləri söyləyərsə, mənim yadıma həm də burada bizim örmətli, bizim xarqatımız Alim Məlum Qasım İşrətliyə də çox yazı bilir ki, Leyli Məclun İktifə Səhniyyə qoyuladır. 1908-ci ildə o, bu vaxtı Leyli rolunu oynaya biləcək bir qadın ifaçı tapılmadı. O vaxtı Əhməd Bəyət Ağdamız ki, bu rolu götürdüyü üzərində. Biz baxın görür, haradan gəlir, paralara qədər inkişaf etmişik. İndi Azərbaycəndə bələcələrdə 138 faiz qadınlardır, Milli Məhzi 120 faiz qadınlardır. Bu kifayətdir, desək, 
kifayetdir. Ne kadar çok kadınlarımız, ne kadar çok təhsilimiz inkişaf etsin, ne kadar çok parlak insanlar getirse, Azərbaycan o kadar da inkişaf edilir. Bugün heyler de yapıldı, Hürmətin Beyba Hanım, Hedda Keçir Bahiyyeler, Cənab Vezirdi, təhsilinle bağlı qaybı dikkat edilir. Hamısın bir hedefi var. İnsan, insan ve insan. Azərbaycanın milli strategiyası sözü əsl mənasıdır. Bütün parametrelerle ülkemizi dünya çapında təmsil edilir. Ölkümüzü ileride yaparabilecek, tereqisi təmin edilecek insanları geçirilmektedir ki, bugün biz bunu çok bariz mühendisliğin görürük. İster bedi sahada, ister intellektual sahada. Şimdi ben bunu hem de öz evlatlarımı timsalına deyelim. Ben çok sevinirim ki, e, çok memnunayım ki, evlatlarımı üçünü de məhz dünya məktəbine etibar etdim. Ve indi onun mən məsulunu görürüm, onun necə deyilə barını görürüm. Baban için onun yetiştirdiği e, ağaç ne kadar kıymetlidirse, bugün müellim için yetiştirdiği o, o tereberi o kadar kıymetlidir. Mereğine kalma görürler, diğer müellimlerin bekarını çekmirler, çekebilirler, üzrə hesab etsinler. Ama bizim evlatların büyümesinde bugün Edelbog Üniversitesi'nde İqtisadiyyat ve Hüquq Fakültesi büyük kızı mutlardır. Ortanca kızı e, Sünni İnternet ve Kompüter elini üzere üçüncü kursu okuyur. Ve burada ben terebelerin, bu şagirdlerin özünü güvenli görende ve bir daha emin oldum ki dünya mektebi doğrudan tähkü terebe ya da şagird hazırlayan hem de şahsiyet hazırlayan. Bu şahsiyetler insanlar bu cür o challenge'da, bu cür challenge'da olan da hazır olurlar. Ve ben bunu öz evlatlarının da timsanında görür, görürüm ki doğrudan da orada bu kadar dünyanın her yerinde insanlar ve terebeler var orada. Mesela orada Azerbaycan'ı təmsil etmektedir, dünya mektebini təmsil etmektedir. Elbette hem şerefdir, hem de büyük bir mesuliyyatdır. Örmətli dostlar, elbette Nariya Hanım hakkında ben sizlerle bir iş kelime deyim. İlk defa evlatlarımızı bura Rüya Mektəbine getirilen zaman ben Nariya Hanım'la görüştüm, etrafı müzakirə etdi. Tabi ki, Hamid Mənim biz tanıyırdı. Uzun müddət təhsil sahasında büyük hizmetleri var, Xəzər Üniversitesi'nin kurulusu, yararısı. Ve Nariya Hanım doğrudan da ilk defa tanış olanda onun ne kadar parlak bir dünya görüşü malik olduğunu gördü ne de parlak şahsiyet olduğunu Pesler, bu adam Allah rahmet eylesin bilirsiniz ve burada da değildi. Yani bir bak bunu sen neyin sıfatını edersen iş vaxtı 9'dan 6'ya göre işleyip ve bunu özü funksiyonu yerine etmiş olsa bir de var ki bu işle yaşayarsan canın yansın bu işe təhsilin inkişafı ile bağlı bu gün doğrudan da bu böyle işler dünya məktəbinin bu mərhələyə gelip çatması ne kadar büyük tələkarlı tələb edir bunu hamımız yaxşı bu. Ona göre de ben Allah Teala'dan Nalil Hanım'a rahmet edelim, onun ruhu şad olsun. Ve doğrudan da Hamid Məlim, Aylin Hanım, siz çok güzel bir təşebbüs göstermişsiniz ki, Nalil Hanım adına təqavüt etsin. Biliyorsunuz, insanların, insan hemen bir ömür yaşayır. Ama bu ömrü necə yaşayırsan, sen de sonra hansı ilişki koyursan, sen necə hatırlarınızsa, bu çok önemlidir. Ve siz tam emin olabilirsiniz ki, ananız ve hayat yoldaşı Nalil Hanım məhz Təhsil sahasında büyük fədəşanlık gösterdiğinde göre hatıralarda yaşayacak. Bu tərqaydı siz təhsil etmekle bunu daha da yaşanacaksınız. Mən ise belki ki, bu gün nümuneler çok olmalı. Bu başkalarını da ruhlandırır. Başkaları da bu prosesler öz tövbəsini vermelidir. Ve eminim ki, Nalil Hanım'ın adına tərqaydı alan milletin, dininin, coğrafiyasının asılı olmalı. Her bir şahs dünya mektedini hatırlayacak. Nalil Hanım'ı hatırlayacak. Azərbaycanı hatırlayacak. Ve burada son olarak onu da demek istedim ki, örmətli müəllimler, ben size hem de ona göre minnettarım ki, siz tek dünya görüşlü insanlara yetiştirmişsiniz, təsir vermişsiniz, eyni zamanda vatandaşlar insanları yetiştirmişsiniz. Ve bu çok önemlidir ki, bizim bu milli bağımızdan korkmayan, müasir çağdaş çağışlara hazırlıklı olan, Azərbaycanı bütün dünyada tanıdan, Mesulaştırak, aynı zamanda biz ülkemizi hem de inkişaf edelim. Bütün bunlarla yanaşır. Elbette, karşıda çoklu işlerimiz var, çoklu görüceğiniz fəaliyyat var. Yeniden ben çok danışabilirim, ancak vaxtı siz istifadə etmək istemiyorum. Ama çok büyük bir yer deyelim, memnuniyetle, taharet sizden bu tədbirə katıldım. Ve bütün bize təqdim etdikleriniz doğrudan da gurur vericidir. Ben bir daha ve bir daha anınızı teşekkür ederim. Uğurlar üzerinde var olun. Bak, təhsilimiz de, inşaatımız da bu cür fədakar təhsil işlerine asılıdır. Ve bu istiqamette Ahmet Mənim, Aylin Hanım, Bərni Hanım ve diğer müəllimlerimizde de uğurlar üzerinde ve eminim ki, bayağı dediğimiz gibi bu gençler Azərbaycanın gelecekte inşaatında çok büyük haber yerine tutacaklar. Çok sanmalı tövbeler edecekler. Sağ olun. Thank you Mr. Azaybudiyev for your speech.
çıkışına göre Cenab-ı Azal Gülüyev'e teşekkür ederim. Now, we would like to shift from discussions to artistic expressions. We're about to enjoy a performance that provides us with a glimpse into the cultural tapestry of times gone by. Speaking of history and tradition, our upcoming composition is taken from the comic and romantic operetta Arshun Malalan by Üzeyir Hacibel. This piece reflects the societal norms of a bygone era, where expectations and relationships were often viewed through a different lens the lens of financial prosperity. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy the performance. In this Geçmiş dövrün içtimai normalarının ən sonluğu bu maraqlı əsər fərqli yanaşmasına görə hər zaman böyük bir maraqla qarşılanmışdı. Sizlərə xoş istəyirəm. Now we are about to embark on another journey, one that brings us closer to the heart of the Naila Hanna Foundation Scholarship. As we've celebrated the present and glimpsed into the past, it's time to hear from the inspiring individuals who have been beneficiaries of this scholarship. So let's take a moment to listen to the voices and experiences of those who have walked this path before us. Their journeys are a testament to the transformative power of education. Let's dive into the interviews with the remarkable individuals who have been recipients of the Naila Hanım Foundation Scholarship. In this is Naila Hanım Tegadu'nun təqdim etmə mərasimin ən həycanlı hissələrdən birinə keçid alırıq. Günümüzün səbəbkarları olan öz əhmətləri ilə həyatlarını dəyişdirərək bu təqayüddən faydalanan cəsarətli gəncləri eşitmək əsil vaxtıdır.
Hello, my name is Rehan Hamidi. I am from Afghanistan and uh, I'm a holder of uh, Naila Hanum Scholarship from 2021, year uh, which is uh, one of the darkest year for all Afghans, for me and for my uh, other people, for especially for our girls. The year that we lost our freedom, the right uh, of education, that was very important for all of us. In 2021, uh, when our girls lost their freedom, their right for education, and I lost my hope, uh, I was totally hopeless. And then I got a good news from Khazar University and I, I won the scholarship. It was like a light in the night of my life. Even I can't uh, explain my expressions that I had those days, but uh, I'm happy that uh, I've gone through it and I, I did it uh, with help of Hazar University and Naila Hanum Scholarship. Thanks to everyone, thanks to Azerbaijan, which is now my second home. Uh, thanks to uh, Hazar University and Naila Hanum family, which uh, gave me the light in my life. Thank you. Hello everyone. I'm Brilliant Windy Khairunisa. I come from Indonesia. I choose Naila Hanum Scholarship because I'm sure that with this scholarship, I can improve my leadership skill and so on, especially because I'm a woman. Since I was a little girl, my father always told me, as a woman with four other siblings, which are females, all of us, we have to become an independent woman. We have to have wide knowledge. We have to improve our skills. Even though we are not from great family, we have to improve it by ourselves. It's so grateful to become a Naila Hanum scholar and I can pursue my master's degree in Azerbaijan. Thank you. What an incredibly moving testament to the impact of the Naila Hanım Foundation scholarship. Bütün bu fikirler Naila Hanım Fondu tekrarının tesisinin ne kadar inanılmaz olduğunun bir sıfatıdır. Bu hikayeler hakikaten tesisin değiştirici gücünü eks ettirir. And now, as we approach a moment of great significance, the moment of awarding of scholarship for the next academic year, it is my honor to invite back to the stage Miss Aygün Gardiner the chairperson of the board of the Naila Hanım Foundation. In this I am very pleased to say that after a rigorous selection this year, the Naila Hanım uh, Foundation Scholarship has been awarded to Mrs. Monirya Bahrami. Please come to stage. Dear fellow students, faculty members, Madam Rector, and all authorities of Hazar University and Neyla Hanım Foundation, thanks for opportunity given to me to speak here. I am Munir Bahrami, an emerging and early career researcher and a scientific editor. Today we all are gathered here to remember a wonderful and inspiring woman Neyla Hanım, who did a great job to educate the society. For every, every girl, her mother is the first woman, first wonderful woman who helped her to be successful, to support her, to help her. My mother is a retired teacher at Kanun Parish Petri, which was established in 1965 as an institute for the intellectual development of children and young adults. I used to go to Kanun with my mom since I was four years old. And during those years, I watched how my mom was motivating children to do some activities, to develop their creative skills. She also always encouraged me to do the critical readings of books and poems, and always ask me to write my creating stories. Most of the time, I used to go to library, sit in the corner of library, 
and enjoy from reading and writing. A habit which led me to be the top student during my whole education career. And also, my writing skills were appreciated in several national level festivals. But, but there was a big gap in my life. I had an enough courage and confidence to present myself in a society due to falling victim to the traditional concept that the woman should be in the corner, the woman should be in the shadow instead of becoming a leader. Fortunately, I am a lucky person because my destiny took me from Khorasan, land of deserts, to Punjab, Pakistan, land of five rivers, the where I met my husband, Dr. Muhammad Irfan Mahsud from Lahore, Pakistan. He narrated me a quotation from Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the founder of Pakistan. There are two powers in the world. One is sword and another is pen. There is a great competition and rivalry between these two. There is a third power that is more stronger than the boss, that was of the woman. This quotation was like a spark that created a huge blaze in my life. It always reminds me that I am a researcher woman empowered with the skill of using pen. So, who could be more stronger than me? Living with Dr. Irfan also gave me an opportunity to be familiar with the most powerful women in the history of Pakistan, such as Muhtaram Fatima Jinnah, the sister of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, who stood shoulder to shoulder with his brother in many political meetings to create Pakistan. When it comes to modern Pakistan, everybody is, uh, is familiar with the name of Binazi Bhutto who was twice Prime Minister of Pakistan and was the first woman as a head of a state in the entire of Islamic world. It was the time I decided to be more active in the society and from 2017 until now, I had several opportunities to prove myself as an influential researcher and technopreneur who has published several web of science articles and also launched two startup companies focusing on scientific writing and research. My written works have been also published in Hello for Hell, the most prestigious magazine of Pakistan Army dedicated to women in Pakistan. Now I am very honored to select as the holder of Naila Khanum Scholarship and to work for, the, for continuing the mission of Naila Khanum and during my PhD. I am fully confident in the same way as my mom was a wonderful woman of Pakistan who changed my life that I will success for them. I intend to say, serve the purpose of this scholarship by creating a national level record in scientific research and academic publishing while, while exploring the diagnostic and therapeutic horizon via cancer genome. Thank you. Now we would like to invite to the stage the ambassador of the United Mexican States, Miss Maria Victoria Romero Caballero. We are sure that her valuable insights on today's topic will be interesting for the whole audience. Birleşmiş Meksika Ştatları Sefri Hanım Maria Victoria Romero Caballero'nun sahneye davet ederek. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rector, for the invitation. I'm really glad that I'm here uh, sharing with you this special moment to honor one of the greatest daughters of Azerbaijan. I'm really touched uh, to know about her and her legacy. And I'm sure 
after listening to these young uh, students discussing about uh, women's leadership, that she would be very, very proud of herself and the work that she's done and the legacy that she's leaving here in this, in this school. I'm really glad to hear that. And um, uh, what uh, the students were, were saying, I was very, very happy to hear because uh, we will uh, have to be, especially female students, we have to be to break ceiling glasses and sticky floors. Then we can advance our careers. Don't be afraid of uh, challenging uh, some uh, intersectionalities that uh, always put us in, as you, you mentioned, in corners. We are not uh, deserved to be in corners. We are deserved to be in front along with our male counterparts. It doesn't mean that we have to fight them. We have to work together to get uh, empowered and to get uh, leaders, leader, leaders for the future. And uh, well, I'm, I'm really happy. I was telling you, uh, some of your colleagues, when I came this afternoon, that uh, at the embassy, we usually, on um, Fridays, we have certain seasons in which we recognize an outstanding uh, woman from Mexico and then the next week to her counterpart. So I know who will be our next uh, lady inspiring woman. That's, the, that's how we, we call it. And rest assured, uh, dear female students, that you will have uh, an ally with us and with me personally. And uh, thank you for, for sharing this special moment. And congratulations uh, to the the lady that got the, the Naila Hanim Award. And Naila Hanim, thank you very much for your legacy. You are already in my heart. And thank you very much and congratulations. And I hope one day one Mexican student will benefit and will contribute to, to uh, Naila Hanim legacy. Thank you very much. Founded a quarter of a century ago, Naila Hanum's dream has flourished into a beacon of education, now spanning across Baku, Ganjad, and Sungayat, impacting the lives of over 2,000 students. This institution stands proudly as an accredited IB school, a testament to the commitment to excellence that Naila Hanum instilled in its foundation. To close this chapter of celebration, let the harmonious voices of our school chorus guide us through the school anthem with the words of Hamilti Sahal and the melody composed by Naila Hamid Saiba. Thank you for joining us today. Let's make the world a better place. Sözlere Hamid Sahal'a, musikçi Naila Hamid Saiba'ya ait olan himnimizi ifa ederek sizler ile sahalaşarak. Bugün bize koş olduğunuz için her birimize teşekkür ederim. Gelin birlikte dünyamızı daha da mükemmelleştirelim.